Welcome to Real Estate Success Partner. We're your hosts, Devin Abuke. David Wynn. And we're here to talk about how to have great success in every market. Hey, and today, guys, that market is Houston. And Dave, brother, who'd you bring along with you today? I got a great realtor for Next Gen Realty, uh, Trin Wynn. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, uh, glad to have you here. I know it's always hard to uh, make time when you've got, uh, you know, the busy life that you have, but we're, we're really excited to have you here on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I would say happy Friday, but I guess Friday is not the best day for realtors and lenders <laughs> and, and real estate industry, right? It's like when we actually start working. Yeah, that's the start of the week, right? <laughs> yeah, start of the week. Friday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Well, and that's it. That's what we're talking about. You know, we know you, you do a lot of activity and uh, that's why we appreciate you taking the time today. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you from Houston originally? My family and I, we moved here when I was 14, and that was in 07, and we've been here since. So you could say I've been here almost 20 years, kind of grew up here, went to high school here, and um, had a few times when I wanted to leave Houston after college, like <laughs> all the kids. That's right. But then, you know, just happened to stay here, and now, honestly, the best city in the world for me. That's awesome. I love it. Mm -hmm. well, you know, always growing. There's always business or new homes popping up out there. You know, Texas is a great market. And, uh, you know, we, we really good playing field for the real estate uh, uh, game. But uh, so you graduated high school, went to college and you went to school to be a realtor? No. So I actually have a background in fine arts, like studio arts mm -hmm. and interior design. So I went to UH for fine arts got out of school, did uh, a lot of nonprofit work, and then didn't like that, went back to school for interior design for a second degree, <laughs> finished that, got out of school, and then the pandemic happened. Mm. Um, and and then I did work in interior design for a little bit, then I actually got sick, like really bad. Like I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease um, in 2021, and so I had to quit my job. Uh, and then just stay home recovering for six months. And during that time, I'm like, what am I going to do now? Yeah. I don't want to go back to the workforce and start, you know, the beginning when I'm, when I'm done with recovering. So yeah. I'm like, I have all this time. So I'm going to take online real estate classes. I love that. <laughs> and I did that in a month. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, maybe here I am. It's a really bad situation. And yes. uh, here you are today and you're doing amazing things. So, you know, we're yeah. so glad that, uh, you know, you recovered because we need great people like you here in this industry. And, uh, you know, we're glad we stole you from interior design, but maybe uh, we talked about this before you hopped on. You can come out <laughs> in our podcast room because we're doing some design in here and we're about <laughs> to change it all up. So we might have to bring you out here to Dallas. <laughs> yeah, yes. It, as long as you pay, I'll, I'll be right? there. <laughs> yeah. Full disclosure, it's going to cost you. <laughs> it's going to cost you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So you got started during the pandemic, an interesting time in real estate, uh, because uh, like most people would have thought, man, everybody's stuck at home. We're not going to be out buying new homes, but it was exactly the opposite uh that was like the only thing you could buy and so real estate world kind of went wild how was that you know getting introduced to the market in one of the busiest times in real estate history you know that was really interesting that you brought that up because it's the it was it was the busiest time in the industry but maybe not to new agents right because mm -hmm. i was new at the time and for new agents the only clients you could get was buyers not so much sellers yeah so Sellers had a great time. Anything could be on the market at any day and sold the next day. That's but right. with buyers, I my very first client, um, they met me on Facebook and they reached out and they were relocating. And honestly, I make the biggest mistake <laughs> <laughs> because I showed them a hundred plus homes, like Ooh, virtually. Wow. It was so many homes. <laughs> and you know, fun. at the time, I was like yeah that's fine my first deal how exciting but it was so many homes i was driving all around town we yeah. put in like six seven offers uh all of them were, got rejected i mean they finally got in but you know it was a, it was a hard time for me yeah. um i felt like is this how it is like this is how we have to write offers like yeah anything you know 60k 70k above the asking price and um sounds about right 
Yeah. So you, were, I, you were literally spinning your wheels because you're literally yeah. driving all over town, throwing yes. that money out the window to look at 100 different properties. And you're right. I mean, that period of time, you'd put in an offer and unless it was conventional or complete cash offer, right, uh, coming over the top with 50, 60, $100,000, you weren't winning those bids. It was a, a really ins insane time for real estate. Yeah. So that's how I got started. And um it got better after that when the market slowed down for me. So that's when my business actually picked up. Mm. But my first deal was, oh my gosh, my client even had to, they felt so bad. They actually pay gas for me. <laughs> they <laughs> owe me $300 <laughs> and they're like, wow. I'm so sorry. Cause they were in California. So I just kind of like, you know, virtually show them homes. I was the one that was driving. Gotcha. Um, but like, that's the thing that I feel like people don't see behind the scenes, no, right? Like. Yeah, 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 that that and, and for an opportunity that maybe never happens, right? Because at the end of the day, right. we hope that they all get to become homeowners and we work with them to, through completion. But that doesn't always happen, you know. So here you are showing a hundred homes with the hope that at the end of the rainbow you're going to get a deal, and you did, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, man, you know, was that uh, what kind of what kind of money was really spent, right, for the time that you took uh, and the energy that you took to go out there and do that, right? That's that's what people don't see. So I love that you right. point that out. Hey, hey, Trina, I yeah. want to talk about because you're the well, I consider the new age of realtors. Uh, you know, you came into this market in, in during COVID. Uh, what, what you don't know, Devin, from, from my conversation with Trina is she's very heavy in social media. All mm -hmm. her leads, I, I would say, what, 80, 90 percent of them are from social media. Uh, and, and, you know, I didn't realize mm -hmm. this, but you said your first lead came from Facebook. So you came into yes. the industry as a rookie and immediately started monetizing social yeah. media uh, because, yes. you know, there's people in this business that have been 20, 30 years that refuses to post any video or don't or, know how to do or, it. or don't know how to do yeah. it and stuff like that. And we all know that it's the new age. You know what? It's the it's 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 how people communicate. It's how look. You're proving it. Brand new into this business, and your first lead was straight from Facebook. So yes. talk about yeah. talk about that. Talk about talk. For, even though you're newer in real estate, what you're doing is 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 very unique in in, in our in our world. Yeah. So. Um... So 50% of my clients are from social media, mm -hmm. mainly from Instagram, and the other 50% is referrals from those clients. Yeah. So I would I would say 100% is social media. Yeah. Um, to me at the time was because I didn't wanna spend money on marketing you know, as a new agent. Um, and I was like, what is the free way that I can do all the time? So I just went on tons of Facebook, mark uh, Facebook groups, posting about myself, and then I was like, let's, let's tackle Instagram because yeah. I can sit there and post two, three times a day for free instead of go out there and door knock and it's hot in Houston, y'all. Like, I it hate is that. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I kind of started it. And I was just like, I didn't really have any expectation. I was just like, you know, it's all about the alg algorithm. So the more you post, the more you might get successful overnight. Like there, there are tons of people out there teaching you how to do like social media, but it might not work for everybody. Right. Um, but I would just like, it's free though. Like, do I want to spend and um, do right. like postcards? You know, like might as well just keep doing it. So I just kept doing it. And my very first year in real estate, I honestly make $20,000 at the end of the year. Like that's all I made. Yeah. But that was the year that I started my social media. Yeah. And then the next year was when I started actually getting people contacting me from social media, like, hey, I'm looking for an agent um, and all of that. And it kind of started picking up. So I honestly, I make 10 times more than even more than that than my first year. Like my business just blew up. Right. And, you know, I, and I talked to David about this before, too. My one my first one million dollar client was also from Instagram. Mm. So. It's, it's kind of like, you know, when it works, you just have to keep doing yeah. it and um, don't kind of get caught in that, oh, my video is not being viewed. Um, I'm not getting a lot of followers because you never know when, you know, That's when right. you get a chance um, or who you're going to meet. I don't have like tons of followers, but at the same time, I just need to meet that one client yeah. or even two clients. Um, and work with them and they really love me and um, they refer me to their network. So it's right. almost kind of like a spider web 
kind of situation. Hey, hey Trina, I, I want to talk about that. So we we're coach, you know, and we're we're we we're on all all platforms. We're on social media. We, we do Google ads. We do drip campaigns. We do everything, right? So you know, traditionally, uh, leads from social media convert at about a one percent rate. Your conversion, mm-hmm. I think, is a lot higher than that. Is there some secret to weeding through the minutia or, or, or whatever? Because, I'll, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's people out there that will get 90 leads and only one of them will convert. But you have to go through right. all 90 leads to convert. I think your conversion rate is a lot higher than that. Is there a secret or something that you can tell to, to the people? I don't reach out to the leads. They come to me. So in a way of, like, you know, I they either have to text me, and I think in the beginning I had like a, a form, a questionnaire they had to fill out with their yeah. information. And if the people spend the time to fill that out, you know they're serious. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, if they're just gonna slide into your DM and ask questions, they might not be serious. Yeah. So you kind of have to take some kind of call to action where people spend a bit more time to answer some questions, and, right. and it can show you, you know, it shows that they're serious. So. I would say you only need to convert one to two, right? Out of like a thousand, five thousand, whatever it is. But then just kind of keep in mind that those people have their own network and you just have to work in the sphere, work in their sphere. Yeah. So it's, it's like, if, you know, if you think that social media will get you like a hundred deals per year, like that's not going to happen. Social media will get you maybe one, two, three deals per year, but your job is to talk to those deals and see if they have other people that you want to work their sphere as well. So that's what is important. So wise. Mm -hmm. Let's walk back through that real quick, because you just talked a little bit about how you captured, but you know, I'm new to social media and I want to know like, you know, what kind of thing do I post? So let's rewind this back to when you first started posting. And, And I love that you said that it didn't happen in the first year, right? Because a lot of people don't realize it's the consistency over time that builds the network, right? And then eventually when you've got enough content and people feel like they know you and they can trust you, that's where they start to reach out. But what are you posting, right? Are you just posting selfies? Like what does that look like, right? When you're first getting started uh, and posting yeah. three times a day? So in the beginning, I posted a lot of new constructions, uh, model home tours, mm. because they're always open every single day. Um, you just need to go there and take some photos, take some pictures and just pick a community and you can do all of the models within the same day. And I just kept posting all of that. And um, that was actually got me a lot of followers in the beginning. Yeah. And then, you know, as time goes by, like driving out to communities, is also time consuming. It is. Um, so I kind of started into posting more like videos of myself and putting myself a little bit more out there, you know, maybe some tips and tricks of buyers and sellers, just really quick videos like that. And you almost have to think like you're an influencer, even though you don't have enough followers to be an influencer yet. But you do have to think that way, because as I do more, I realize you also have to love doing it to maintain it. So the more you go out there and take photos of homes and things like that, that's great. But a lot of the times we don't have the time to do that. We we, you know, we go and show homes all the time and do contracts and calls. So it does take time to those to do those videos. So um, even just like a quick 20 seconds of telling them about your latest transaction or just something you want to share. Uh, think of your audience like your friends, like you just like yep. creating these contents for them. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, and I feel like that's much more manageable and is a lot more um, like I can produce a lot more with that kind of content. I love that. I love that. And it, so, so let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit too. So effectively, you know, what you said was we start off with just doing home tours of new properties and that's so brilliant because what do people want to see? They love to see a brand new home and like what might be available to them. And so we start with that, but then we get to pro tips. So where do these pro tips come from, right? Is it just the experiences that you're having or are you just a wizard and you happen to know all the tips in the world? Like, where do you get this information? Is the, is the experience that I'm having okay. and just, you know, like anyone can, all realtors know this, like any transaction, you learn 15, 20 new things. Um, and that's 15, 20 new content, right? Like that's right. you don't have to talk about the entire transaction within one video. You can break it down to different tips and tricks. You also don't want to give everything out there. And then, um, so people can just like have free tips and tricks, but at the same time, you want to show your values to these people so you can just break down your transaction 
I think that even though you can you do one deal, um, brand new brand new agent, you can still make a hundred contents with that one deal. Yeah. So, so that's just how I do it, and I also recycle my contents. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but uh, <laughs> we all do so, it. So, we all do it. <laughs> things I post maybe three years ago, now I'm posting it again. Right? People yeah. are not gonna go and check. Um, the the I think the. Uh, the game here is just making sure that you stay relevant and you keep posting and don't, right. you know, don't slack off. Like you, every week, if you can do every day, at least do every week. Well, and you just said some things that our mentors have taught us. And I think you touched on all those and probably did it without even having somebody influence you to do it. But um, what, our, what, our, what our mentors tell us is teach, tell, touch, sell. Right. So what do we want to do? We want to teach them something. Well, that's what you're doing with, you know, the tips. Hey, I just helped this family and this is what we were able to do. And hey, if you're trying to buy something, this might be something you can try to. Right. Um, you want to touch their hearts. Right. You know, so show them a really touching story, you know, and it doesn't always have to be real estate related. It could be anything. Right. Just something that's really touching to them. Right. Um, tell them something. Right. Well, hey, check out this new home in this new subdivision. Right. Or, hey, check out what's going on in Houston this weekend. <clears throat> you might when you get out of here and check this out, you might see me there, right? You know, and then sell. Hey, I got this property and I'm trying to sell it right now and I'd love to sell it to you. So at the end of the day, you did all of those things as a rookie, just coming into the industry and, you know, you've built a great big network as a result of that. Kudos to you. Like, that's awesome, you know? And I think the most admirable thing, if you're really listening, guys, she said the first year, $20,000. That's all she made. Showing a hundred homes, <laughs> you know, somebody virtually driving all over town, right? You know, not on that one deal. We know that, but you know, twenty thousand dollars and what kind of expenses went into that? All while building a channel with no real volume to support that it's actually working. Just a trust and a belief that I'm going to do what it takes and I'm going to find success. And now here you are today. And as you said, not only did you do more, you ten times your income. And I don't even want to talk about what you're doing today. But at the end of the, but the end of the story here, you know, you're you're taking action and you're rejecting the fear that most people have. And that's an admiral quality, you know. And you did it because you didn't have a choice. You had to get out of the industry you're in and figure out, well, what am I gonna do next? So man, I, I'm inspired. I'm inspired by your story. This is really good. Well, even yeah. more so, the last two years has been probably two of the worst years in real estate in the last 20 years, you know, other than 2008 right. and 2009, we're talking about now, yeah. uh, you know, you, you did incredible the last couple of years. So, I mean, yes, you know, yeah. what, one thing about your, what you do trend is if you, if you did well in this market, just think what's coming down the road in the next right. couple of years, whenever it's supposed to be a boom, you know, you, you you're going to survive any market. You're going to, you you're, we know you're great. You're going to be a, a, a major influencer in this business. Yeah, I think, you know, having a mindset, uh, like a positive mindset is important in this business. And I feel like people always say that, right? I just keep thinking like there's, there's um, sellers and buyers for any market, you just have to find them. Um, you know, like for me, people said the last two years were hard for them. But then I'm like, well, I worked a lot with first time home buyers. So their choice is really paying rent or paying mortgage. So they have to pay for something. Um, but paying rent doesn't, that's a hundred percent interest rate. So if you really think about, you know, people's situation and guide them, because we can't control the market, but we can at least like guide them through the market to get them the best deal and whatever that makes sense in their life. That's right. And you just have to think of it that way and positively, because I feel like if you're thinking like, oh, this market sucks, <laughs> this, you know, everything is, everything is negative. Like you're your clients it. can feel that from you, <laughs> you know, like people can feel that from you. So, um, no, your you energy is important. Stay positive. Yeah. yeah. You gotta have that energy, you know, because people want to do business with people that they like, and people don't typically like Debbie Downer, right. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you're going to buy a house now. Why would you do it now? Right. <laughs> you know, no, it's, it's yeah. Exciting. People need homes. We've got to lead them to homes and we got to help them with the best scenario. And what you know, what David, I know is that if they buy it right now, they're actually probably getting a better deal because people are willing to negotiate today. Right. And more yeah. importantly, the rates are coming down. They can always refinance the darn thing, you know, where the person that waits for the market, the homes are going to go up, right? So it's really not a terrible time to buy a home. It's actually a great time to buy a home. It's not a great time to sell a home, right? So but, yeah, uh, I, I, I think it's just kind of like, you just have to pick your poison, right? Like, mm -hmm. do you want 
low interest rate but compete all the time and see tons of homes and feel discouraged or you want to buy now and be able to find something and then refinance later i mean the same thing with the you know if the market switches you you also just have to think about um the pros and cons and make a list of those and see whatever that makes sense yeah agreed well i gotta ask mm -hmm. you you know and we love to, to really kind of go deep here you know tell me why do you do this, right? We know why you got in the market, but why just stay in the market? Because at the end of the day, um, sure, you're having success, and I'm sure that's been been great, um, but you have a background in another industry. Like, what, when you got into real estate, made you realize that, like, this is what you want to do? Like, what, what, why are you doing this thing? Um, I, so I recently realized that I hate working nine to five because <laughs> I was just kind of, like, thinking about everything, like, why am I still doing this? <laughs> but, yeah. At the same time, it's like one thing about real estate that I really like is that you do work a lot more than a nine to five hours. You think about your job all the time. When you sleep, you literally sure. wake up. You know, I, I I told my friends that the only calls I actually get are work calls because yeah. my friends don't call me. <laughs> they text me. <laughs> so like when I get a call, it's, it's work. Um, but at the same time, there's a freedom in that, right? Like you, you know, and I kind of like that. Like I rather work more, but I feel like I'm at the point now that I can also pick my own client. Yeah. Um, you don't have to work with people you don't want to work with or, but also you're, you're changing people's lives. Like if you work with a client, they really appreciate you. They will show it. And that's really rewarding. Um, and just the challenge in real estate. I feel like when I was working nine to five, every day became the same at some yeah. point. Yep. But with real estate, it's not, right? Like this morning, I felt very happy, but then something happened in the afternoon. Now I'm like feeling so sad about it. So <laughs> it things always come up. And then when people ask like, what kind of challenge? And, and you can't really explain that to them because they have to be in it to see it. That's right. Um, and I really enjoy that. Like you thrive different the things happen all the time. Yeah. Thriving in the yeah. chaos. You know, it's funny you say that because, you know, I think I'm a little bit the same way and I know Dave is too. You know, um, I get bored if something stays the same. This industry never never stays the same. Uh, I'm the weird kind of guy that likes to build Legos when I'm not working because I want to challenge, right? Like, that's what I want to do. I want to take something that's very difficult and turn it into something awesome. And I think you get to do that with real estate. You get to take these really complex equations and make them work for people. And at the end, it, you're right. It's so rewarding to be able to help somebody into a home. A lot of times a home that they never thought that they could afford, right? And you get to find a way to do that. And you get to work with the right partners to make that happen too, because I think a lot of people don't realize this, but it's not just about the right agent and the right loan officer. It's it's all of it. It's the agent, the loan officer, the title company, right? All the inspection companies that we work with and knowing who you could reach out to that's going to be able to give you the professional insight. We become a team, right? You know, that's what right. real estate really is. So I think there's something special about that too. When you're assembling your team and figuring out not only are these the people that I want to work with in uh, my my business, this is my team, my people that I'm going to do life with, you know? Right. Yeah. And I, I do think that it's not for everybody. You kind of have to be a hustler at heart, you know, like constantly your mind is constantly working at different things and um, you always want to get up and do something. Like, I think that's also part of me since I was very young. Like I had three, four jobs for, I don't know why I did, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just constantly like, you know, like you have to keep it going and yeah. you kind of have that mindset as well. Cause it's really not for everybody. Well, I, mm -hmm. I tell everybody trend in real estate, you better love it because just like you, yes, we don't clock a nine to five, but you work, you're on seven days a week, 24 hours a day that I know for a fact, if you're successful in this business, you better take a call at eight o'clock at night or eight o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning. You know, so it's just, uh, that's the part that people don't know. People think real estate is glamorous. You make all this money, you, yeah. you, you get off, but it's really, it really is a 24 seven job. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. You, you work on vacations. People yeah. don't say that, but you do, <laughs> you don't have vacations. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking to an agent that said, you know, I wrote three contracts while sitting in line on Disney rides last year. Right. You know, it's like, <laughs> he's yeah. like, thank goodness the lines were long. I had time to do my job while I was waiting to get on. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I did have that happen. I think last year when, um, I submitted an offer right before I was going to, uh, fly out to somewhere and I literally texted the agent like, Hey, I am going to be on a flight. <laughs> I'm going to be on a plane in the next three hours. 
So if I don't respond, just letting you know, I will respond in the next three hours. That's right. Literally the moment that you land, you just want to turn on your phone and see like who's calling and who's texting. I'll tell you what, I don't even turn it off there. I subscribe to the Wi-Fi and I just keep working while I'm on the flight, right? You know, and that's one of the benefits to, you know, modern mm -hmm. airfare. We didn't get that that's a few true. years back, but you can do it now. So literally I don't even take off work when I'm in the air, right? You know, you've got to, you just, you keep it going at all times. And I know you did the same thing. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, so speaking of, you know, we always like to ask, wh when do you get this free time and what do you do in your free time? Right. Is it just uh, just you? Do you have a family? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. So my my boyfriend and I, we we travel a lot. So we like traveling, um, even though like you travel when you when you work and travel. But we do take the time. Like sometimes if it's not urgent, I don't um, answer calls or texts after 9 p.m. or you know, if I can, <laughs> um, and then like you, I don't build Legos, but I build these little mini houses because oh, <laughs> I like love challenges. It. So yes. I like to do that as well. Um, but you just kind of have to kind of have to set the time away and, um, even just like an hour or two. But I, what I do notice is when you do have free time in real estate, you value it more than when you have a nine to five, right? For me, it's like the 9 PM to midnight. That's like, my very valuable time every yeah. single day. I'm just gonna sit here and watch House of Dragons and no <laughs> one's gonna bother me, <laughs> you yeah. know? So um, yeah, I think it's just like, you kind of value the little things in life more when your life is chaotic all the time at work. I agree with you, I agree with you. Nine to midnight is typically my wife and I's time to just unwind and just, you know, just, just you know, not have to worry about anything because during the rest of the, the day, mm -hmm. it's, it's nonstop. We got kids at home. So, you know, I, I get where you're coming from. But, uh, well, good stuff, man. Dave, again, you always find great people. Um, Trent, <laughs> uh, you know, we'd love to keep you here all day, but we know, you know, you're busy. You know, well, you're productive. Um, is there anything we didn't tackle today or cover that we should have? Um, I think the only thing that I kind of want to send a message out there is that, you know, for the for buyers and sellers too, when you find and work with an agent, like don't just go off someone's referrals, like also go off, um, interview your agents, you know, there are agents everywhere. Um, don't just go with someone that your parents use or a cousin in the family, but yeah. interview everybody because anyone, every, every agent is different. Um, you can get that license very easily, but it's also like you can have a really good agent, but they might not vibe with you right like someone's really good but you might not like their personality so it's important to just find someone that that you vibe with and it's something i tell my clients all the time like talk to me now and then talk to another agent tomorrow too and see which one you like that's so smart mm -hmm. you know and i i couldn't agree with you more because at the end of the day we have all seen that and, and what's funny is i remember the first time i bought a house uh, I went with an agent because I worked with the gentleman. His wife was the agent. And I thought, well, you know, she must be great. He's in the industry. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. I found the house. There was no, no, no discussion. You know, when it came to negotiation, she's like, oh, I just think you should take that off. There was no, you know, it, literally, I didn't feel good about the transaction at all. And, uh, you know, I walked away from that going, man, I, I never do that again. Right. You know, so I think you're right. You need to make sure that your network with an agent that's professional. It's going to actually provide a service and a value uh, and that you also click with. You want to work with somebody that you love. Right. And I can't see why they wouldn't love working with you, Trin. You know, you're just uh, uh, full of energy and just a great, uh, you know, person. And I see your passion and, and that's important. Right. You want to work with somebody that's passionate about what they do because you're going to get great service. And, and Trin, you know, that's 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 why you're having such great success. You know, you care about the people you're working with and you love the industry you're in. So. So, man, great to have you thank here today. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you, guys. Well, uh, when the folks out here want to find you, we know you're in Houston. Do you serve the whole mm -hmm. area of Houston and surrounding areas? Like, what, what part of Houston do you serve? Yes, Houston and surrounding area. So, anywhere you can think of, Tomball, Fullshear, Katy, Texas. <laughs> um, right. Or, you know, Lake City, Texas City, things like that. Yeah, we anywhere can't leave within, anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere within the 30-mile radius or yeah. so of central Houston, I do serve all of, the, all of those areas. That's awesome. And you can also find me on Instagram. We've been talking a lot about social media, so definitely find me on Instagram. I post every week um, very informative contents we're also really fun contents you get to see homes all the times we also get to hear me talk all the time on social media and um What's it's just app? gonna be what's the at what, what's our at to find you 
It's Trinwin underscore HTX Realtor. There it is. There it is, guys. Yes. And if you're listening in, um, go check the description because we've got everything there. And if you're watching, just look right across the screen because it just ran right across the bottom. Um, what about a phone number or email? Do you want to give anything else out or just the uh, the Instagram tag? Uh, so, yes, my phone number is 281-818-1108. So you can text and call me anytime. I do respond really quickly. Um, if you want to, you know, any kind of advice, like that does go into my, my personal phone number. So I don't have a separate work number. So, um, but yes, and then just uh, email is trinwin.realestate at gmail.com. Simple. That's perfect. And guys, she will mm. answer. You know, that's how we got her on the show. So <laughs> don't worry if you call, you've got a, a friend in real estate here. And Trin's going to take amazing care of you. And if you want to get to know her, go over to that Instagram channel. She's got years of content. You get to know exactly who she is. So, hey, great to have you here today. Dave, anything uh, you'd like to say to Trin before we let her get out of here today? No, if you're looking for real estate in the Houston area, call Trin. You, let's use her words. Uh, she, I think she vibes with everybody. So it, it's going to be a good time. We'll buy some real estate from Trin in Houston. Let's do it. Let's thank go. you. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Well, we appreciate you guys stopping by today. We're your real estate success. Oh, we're your real estate <laughs> success partners. I'm Devin Debut. I'm David Wynn. If you want to check us out, come on over to realestatesuccesspartner.com. Again, that's realestatesuccesspartner.com. Or check us out on YouTube for the full podcast. You can actually find us there at the Dubuque team. And we'll spell that out for you so you don't have to try to spell it yourself. That's at the Dubuque team. Or come to Insta, Facebook, TikTok. We're on all those. Hey, make sure you subscribe, <laughs> like, and comment. We'd love to hear your feedback. And don't forget to call Trin. She's going to take great care of you. Until the next time, we'll see you then. See you guys.